Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives have failed Canadians just when they needed help the most. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Environment and her Conservative government have failed to rise to the urgent challenge of fighting climate change. The world's gathering in Lima right now to move forward. They're setting the stage for a global agreement on climate change that will be finalized next year in Paris. Will the Minister finally deliver on their long promised oil and gas regulations, or are they happy to make Canada an international pariah? Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are playing a leadership role on the international stage. We have contributed $1.2 billion to more than 60 developing countries to reduce emissions and to adapt to climate change. We announced last week an additional $300 million for the Green Climate Fund, and we are a founding member of a major financial uh, and major financial contributor to the Climate and Clean Air Coalition. We're also addressing short-lived climate pollutants under Canada's chairmanship of the Arctic Council. We will continue to protect our environment while keeping the economy strong. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, the Honourable Member for Halifax. They promised oil and gas regulations, they promised to act if the U.S. acted, and they promised to reduce our emissions. The only thing that they're any good at is breaking promises, and now we're not even on side with the Obama administration and what they're doing. The minister's own department admits that her 2020 targets are not going to be met by a long shot. So what exactly are the Conservatives going to offer in Lima? The Honourable Minister of the Environment. Mr. Speaker, we are very proud of our record. Uh, we are a founding member of the Climate and Clean Air Coalition. We have made significant investments to help support green energy infrastructure internationally. We have one of the cleanest systems in the world. We have already regulated that transportation and electricity sector, and we are planning to reduce HFCs, one of the fastest growing G greenhouse gas emissions in the world, and thanks to these actions, carbon emissions will go down to close to 130 megatons from what they would have been under the Liberals without introducing an NDP carbon tax.